Okay, vi er klar til den næste taler. Det er Jakob Wolfhengel, som skal snakke lidt. So who's going to talk about um, running XMPP servers um, of, within the Tor network? Give uh, an applause to Jacob. So hello everyone, and thank you for attending this. First of all, I would like to uh, to um, thank the the organizers and volunteers at Bonhag for creating this space where we can talk about stuff, sharing ideas and technology and drink beers and have fun. So this talk will focus on how to run a very Tor-friendly XMPP server. Um, I forgot to put into the abstract that the server actually also enforces using OTR, so you cannot use this server without using OTR encryption. Um, which probably most of you already know what is. The reason I enforce OTI is first of all to try to protect the users from, um, to protect my users from, uh, from, from sending clear text messages out on the networks. And, but secondly, it's also because it's, many people use XMPP servers without encryption and yeah, this server forces it. So if you have a friend who uses another XMPP server and doesn't use, uh, and he doesn't or she doesn't use XMPP, uh, OTR, uh, you will have to have a talk with your friend or switch to another XMPP server. Uh, yeah, and that's the, yeah, that's the reason why I do that. So first I will run over, uh, first I will talk a little bit about myself, then I will, um, then I will talk about how I set up the server, how, it's how I secured it, and how I patched the server. And uh, um, yes, so my, the background is, my name is Jacob. I've had an interest in securing systems uh, since I put up my first server on the internet. And I've been using computers uh, for the past 15 years or so. And the first server I set up was an FTP server so that I could uh, share MP3s with my friends. And then I found out I had to put firewalls on it and that stuff. And I mean, yeah, so the knowledge grew as I wanted to do more stuff on the internet. And back in the day, there was a program called ICQ that really blew my mind. Uh, I installed it and my friends installed it and suddenly we could talk to each other on uh, online instead of picking up the phone. and. Um, um, people who have been on the internet for a, for a longer time will say that IRC was there before ICQ, but we were just users, not we weren't nerds who knew how to use IRC. So um, ICQ was my first experience with online communication, and um, it was really nice. So um, some years ago, I read about this interesting project called Tor, and I was very intrigued by the idea of using a network that. Uh, uh, to anonymize myself with, uh, some, it was suddenly very, very easy to switch IP, or s I mean switch identity and use another IP that wasn't my own, and it was also legal. I mean, uh, instead of using misconfigured uh, proxies on the internet to get another IP address, suddenly we had a, a platform where we could uh, get other IPs. Um, so I also set up a Tor server and uh, let it run for a few days. Then I tried to go on IRC and I was banned from all the networks because uh, I didn't know about exit nodes. So I had put up an exit node instead of a relay and <laughs> other people were using my IP for, for stuff on IRC. So I took down the server, switched my IP and then um, uh, then I configure it as a relay instead of an exit node. So always for, remember to read the documentation before you put something on the internet. Uh, so that was, yeah, ISC, ICQ, and, and Tor. Then Windows, because I was talking to my friends on ICQ, then Windows came along with the Messenger platform, was really, really easy to use, and everybody switched to Messenger instead of ICQ. And um, I had friends I wanted to keep private communications with instead of delivering it through the Microsoft network. And there was a third party in France, I forget what the company is called, but they're, they had an encryption layer on top of Messenger called uh, SIMP, S-I-M-P, that we could use to talk uh, privately with. Um, so um, I really liked it that uh, that we could talk privately, and uh, that was my first experience talking securely on on the internet instead of just yeah clear text uh, messaging. Then 
Facebook came along, and suddenly all my friends who I had uh, forced to use SIM, they started using Facebook instead, Facebook chat. Um, and I found out that the Facebook chat used an open protocol called XMPP, and that uh, piqued my interest. So I read about it and found out that uh, I could use another client. I didn't, use to, I didn't have to use the web interface to, to, to talk to people. So I installed Pigeon, and um, yeah, Pigeon had this uh, extra layer called OTR off the record that I could use instead of SIP for Messenger. So that's, that's, that's what I use. So many of me and my friends, we used uh, Facebook and, and talked uh, anonymously or, or privately using OTR. Um, so the reasons why we did this was communicating privately with friends and uh, well, uh, Facebook changed their changed their XMPP implementation to not. It, it was very hard to use uh, Pigeon and other clients on. Uh, you can use them again on on Facebook now, but at that point you couldn't use them. And so, uh, Jabber CCC .de is a very well known XMPP server. Many people use it, but their sign up is always down, or the capture is failing, and also it's a single point of failure. So I set up uh, my own XMPP server because I think we need to have more services. So when one goes down, we'll have another. Uh, so uh, I had some security considerations using uh, setting up this server, and uh, I have a I have a server in Germany which is a dedicated server. It's not a VPS, so it, it's it's its own server. Um, so I've tried to make sure that that it's as locked down as possible. So I've tried to set it up as as securely as I can. So it's a, it's a dedicated server and it has the ports like USB and FireWire are disabled on it. And I also run a script on it that when weird changes happen to the server, it'll it'll lock down. So if someone pulls the network uh, cable and and puts it into another switch, uh, my server will lock down. I also use full disk encryption on the server. So that means that if someone takes out the hard drive, they only get gibberish, but uh, I think you all know this. And also the, the Cloak DK um, services are running inside a jail set up on the FreeBSD machine, which it runs, it runs FreeBSD. Um, so, um, yeah, you can see I run I run quite a, f a few different uh, services on it uh, or jails on my server. Like uh, these are number 38 to 41. I think I run around 65 different services on the server. Um, uh, yes, my philosophy is to have one service per jail. It's a that's it's a it's a nice way to to do it. So. So if you have like a SQL server that's uh, vul vulnerable, it'll it you I mean it'll be difficult to jump from one service to another and and get the like uh, get user information from from the service to 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 use in a, in another service. Uh, also, I use the latest version of OpenSSL always um, because there's been so many attacks on OpenSSL recently, so I make sure to read the mailing list and whenever a patch is, is created for something, I, I use that. And uh, I use something called Putriere, which is a package system. So it'll, it'll build all the packages for the server and I actually only need to, to, to look at the mailing lists and then if, if there's a new package for OpenSSL, I'll just say install that package and boom, it's already created. Um, and also, um, the server uses uh, a self-signed certif certificate because, uh, yeah, I I don't have the money to to buy uh, from a from a CA. So uh, and it also also it doesn't really matter because yes, it it doesn't really matter. And I mean, forward going maybe I'll use Let's Encrypt, but I haven't set that up yet. So uh, this is how I create the cert. It's a pretty, it's a, it's AES two fifty six and with four thousand ninety six bit. So yeah, it's just a script I use. Boom. Then I have my certific certificate. 
some more security considerations. Even though I've disabled USB and FireWire, there's also there's always an attack vector using ILO, which is a separate computer running on the on the server that you can use for management. So, I mean, you can you can use that. So, yeah, and also the the server is located in Germany, not in Denmark, which means that uh, it's not on a, under Danish law, which I would really really like. And it's always on. So even though if I use, uh, even though um, I use full disk encryption. The keys are all, all in memory. So if someone attacks it in some way that I haven't figured out, maybe they can use the keys in memory to, I mean, the, the file system is not encrypted. More, it needs to be shut down for, it, for, the, for the full disk encryption to actually work. Um, cloak, the Cloak XMPP server uses, uh, uh, is, is is something called Prosody. There are many different uh, servers, but Prosody is the one I use because it had two modules that I really needed: the uh, Onions mod and the Onions mod and the OTR mod. So uh, yeah, and it's written in Lua. I don't know Lua very well, but uh, Lua is easy to read, and especially the the modules are very small and very easy to to look over how, what code is in is in them, and both. Um, Mod onions and mod OTR are part of the official uh, prosody packages or modules. So you can just, I mean, it's on the official website. Um, so, the, and it's also, it's set up with two virtual servers. So you can either sign up to Cloak DK, you'll get a username at Cloak DK, or you can use a username at the onion address that it also has. So you, I mean, <laughs> Yes, it's a very long name, very, very difficult to pronounce, but uh, if you really want uh, an Onion user, you can get one. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, it's, it's the same server. I mean, if you have a Cloak DK uh, user, you can still talk to people who are using other Onion XMPP servers, and if you're using the Onion server, you can still talk to people who are not using Onion XMPP server. So if you have a friend who's on uh, the Jabba CCC uh, XMPP, you can you can still uh, talk to that guy or her. And mod OTR is set up this way. As I said before, I I enforce using OTR on the server. If you use uh, if you don't use OTR in your client, it'll you can it'll it'll warn you. Cloak DK will send a message to you that you are talking unencrypted, and that's but you can still send out clear text messages to your friend. So that's why I want the server to be in Denmark instead of Germany, because it'll cross a lot of networks. And I mean, most people who use it, I think, are in Denmark anyway. So yeah, that would be, that would be best. Wait. OK, I have, there's one slide missing. But <coughs> there's a slide missing for mod onion, but uh, the the onion server as i the onion server it uses the the cloak tor 10 10 10 uh, uh jail for for communicating so it has its own tor uh, client running that talks to the rest of the tor network and of course i've set up the uh, the onion inside that the hidden service for it inside that Uh, I would like to do a live demonstration of how you can sign up to the to the fi to the service, but I can't really do that because I don't have the right cable for <laughs> for showing it. It's on this uh, it's on this computer, um, and the future of Cloak DK is uh, as a dedicated server in Denmark. So if anyone has access to a data center, I would really like to talk to them. And uh, I mean, I would also like to have a dedicated server only for Cloak. DK because I run a lot of other services on it, uh, and uh, it, it would be nice to to split that out from from Cloak DK. And also, I would like to have physical access to uh, to it because um, I could use a I could create a gyro USB. So if someone tries to pull the the server out of the rack, it'll shut down as well. So that was really what I had right now. If uh, if anyone wants to discuss anything with me, they're welcome to, to ask me any questions about the server. 
and we ran through it so fast that it, we can actually do maybe I can I don't know if someone has a cable for a, that works with this I can do a live demonstration of how you set up a, an account on it I don't know Yeah, this one. So, anyone have any questions for a thing? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, have you considered self hosting it at home rather than having the risk of the third party uh, hosting you know. do you say if I <coughs> have considered running it at home yeah yeah but I mean I don't have a I don't have a good connection at home it's just a cable connection right <laughs> okay so if I had a dedicated fiber maybe for just uh, text you don't need significant connection right? yeah I know but it, it's not a stable connection okay <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Other questions? Then we might have a live demo now.